Um, well, for uh, Google Search Console, I had the same question uh, as Andy, and also uh, so it ties into the voice search, because that would be good to have information like that within the Google Search Console, because we have queries, um, but if we say, if we go from what people were talking about today, where 50% um, of people will be using uh, uh, voice search by 2020, then it would be good, or 50% of queries would be from voice search, we need to have that sort of information. 50% by 2020? Yeah, I'll, I wrote it down, so I'll... <laughs> so it's, she wrote it down, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> so there. It is yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah but yeah. So if we're getting all that... We are giving that number? No, we yeah. need to be able to record it. We need to be able to put that in our... Um, well, we need to be able to put that in, basically, analytics and be able to see, you know, where is this coming from? Because otherwise you could lose 50% of data. Okay. Um, honestly, prove me wrong, but in, in two years. But if we reach 50% in two years for voice searches, I will be yeah. like very, very surprised. And so I will what, quit. Is it, what is it now? I will not tell you. I know you won't, but <laughs> um, so I'm like, surprise you. Why not? It's, well, it's, it is indeed growing. Um, but voice search has been picked up or became more mainstream, I would say, um, quite recently, right? Um, it's been, what, two years since we started like more actively talking about it, like yeah. the marketing team. Mm -hmm. um, and um, if it became more mainstream like two years ago, then you, I would say that those numbers can't be that big. Um, I mean, this is just an assumption. Um, I, I don't actually have the number off, off the top of my head, but... Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I actually don't. Okay. I don't believe you. I know funny. the ballpark, but... Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's growing, but it's not anywhere near as big as that yet, is what you're saying. I, I think it's, it's kind of blow, blown up. Um, yeah. it's, it's kind of like... I mean, it, it is going to become a big thing. Um, I, I don't have doubts about uh, voice becoming something really, really big because it's more natural to interact with devices um, using voice. Um, but again, this trend became, uh, uh, began recently. Uh, it, it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't picked up for uh, for ten years, for example, like like mobile mm. search. Um, I I, I, w I would focus on, on something else. Really, there are there are so there are so many things that people should should do with their websites, um, or SEO should do with uh, with the clients' websites. Um, I, I know several SEOs who like continuously ask me about voice search, but most of their clients uh, are um, not even remotely ready for mobile first indexing, for example, which is like... Happening now and needs to, yeah. And then they are asking me about voice search. It's like, fix the websites first. So other than preparing for mobile first, what do you think are the biggest mistakes then that many businesses SEOs are still making and aren't kind of focusing on where they should be? Mm -hmm. um, you kind of set me up with that one. Yeah, I realized that that's, I was like laughing at myself because I'm an idiot. Uh, did you just nod? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I like coming here. It's like, you're being treated nicely and stuff. Um, so, um, I think many people don't realize the potential in, uh, in search different than text. Um, we, ha we have, for example, video search, we have uh, image search. Uh, both of them are growing rapidly uh, thanks to uh, portals, not thanks to sites. 
uh, we would be very, very happy to index images and index videos from, um, from your websites or clients' websites or whatever, uh, from individual websites rather than uh, portals. Um, but it doesn't seem like people want that. And I don't understand why. Because if you are selling shoes, for example, then you could totally create videos or images that are indexable and rankable. Uh, and then um, Google would rank them, not just in image search, but uh, also in, uh, uh, in universal search. Mm -hmm. you know, basically, if someone searches for one specific shoe, um, then we would show probably images that um, show up right on the text uh, on, on web search. Um, on web search search results. Yeah. Um, I would be m very happy if people would pay attention more, more attention to that um, because they are missing out. Um, and there are tons of competitive keywords where people are trying to increase their traffic um, or optimizing those pages that they want to rank uh, with. Uh, by uh, doing weird things and buying links and whatever, um, when there are not enough images for that thing, for that keyword, or there are not good images. It's there. You could do it. You could put your, uh, uh, your foot in the door by having an image that um, is optimized uh, for, for image search. Um, and then if it's optimized for image search, then it might show up, or it has a, actually a good chance that it will show up in uh, universal search as well. And when you are optimizing images, then what, I mean, I know you need some fairly basic stuff you need to do, but what are your kind of yeah. tips for getting the most out of that then and making sure you've got the best chance of being ranked? Um, so image search actually is very simple. Um, the whole thing boils down to having the image and then um, providing as much context for the image as possible. Um, if, for example, most of your images have captions, um, basically text that describes the image, that's a great way to, to start. Mm -hmm. um, we can also assume context from, from the surrounding text, um, but captions make it slightly easier, I guess. Um, alt text, um, that's, yeah. that's quite helpful when, uh, uh, when it's written naturally, mm -hmm. uh, not like puppy, puppies, dog, small dog, whatever, but a picture of a puppy or a Rottweiler puppy. I don't know why I thought of Rottweiler, but anyway. Um, Careful. Um, what else? Image sitemaps are quite helpful. Um, I'm trying to convince the team to uh, start using um, uh, structured data um, because there's more stuff that you can provide on the page rather than like setting up something completely separate and pushing um, into the sitemap, for example, um, and also easier to extend. Mm, pretty much that's it. Like it wouldn't actually be very hard to optimize for yeah. images. It's more that you actually have to sit down and just do it. Plan it and, and plan yeah. it and do it. And what about videos then? Because that's perhaps a bit more difficult in the fact that you're saying not that many websites are actually using it on their own site and they're using YouTube, I guess, or Vimeo and other platforms. Why is that not a good strategy? Or is it a good strategy, but you should also have those videos on your website or which one? Well, you can embed them. Yeah. Um, like you can host on Vimeo or YouTube mm -hmm. or whichever um, and embed them. Um, you might rank with your channel uh, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, if the context from the query uh, deserves it or requires it, then we would show the website because we do know that it's in, or that video uh, is embedded in, the, in, the, in, a, in your page. Mm -hmm. um, Provide context, pretty much like with images. Um, that's that's a secret for for media. But would Google then prefer to rank, or is it? It's more likely that if you've got a video embedded on your website, that would outrank a, a YouTube video. 
the, the same the, topic? Or? So here's the thing. Um, YouTube itself doesn't get a benefit. YouTube um, basically has great, great SEO for, for, for yeah. videos. Um, that's why they are ranking so well. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that it's a Google company, but they, they don't talk to the search team. They, on their own, figured out how to rank uh, video as well, and they are doing well. If you go to Bing uh, and search for pretty much any video, um, then also there you are going to see tons of tons yeah. of YouTube videos. Um, it's um, it, YouTube is is great for you to host your your uh, videos on because they take care of your uh, of SEO for you. Um, but then if you have content that can provide more context, then it starts to make sense to embed that video somewhere mm -hmm. on your on, on on a page on your site uh, where we can learn more about the video. And then you get the benefit of people searching within YouTube can still find it, but also yeah. it's visible exactly. on your site. And what about if it's um so for multilingual websites or you've got, you know you want to create videos in multiple languages, one of the options is and perhaps an easier option than creating ones in every language is to use subtitles. Mm -hmm. From an optimization point of view, is it still how does that you know how does that work? And from a ranking point of view, because of course you can write the description in the different languages and yeah. therefore it would be picked up. So but. that part of video indexing is uh, well, it sucks. Um, if the subtitle is embedded in the video, we are pretty much not going to see it. Yeah. Um, which sucks. Mm. But then processing videos takes lots of lots of resources, uh, which even uh, even we don't have. Um, I know that there are experiments for processing some videos, but they have to be like the top of the top videos. Um, I actually don't know how you could do optimization for multilingual videos. That might be something to figure out. Well, please do, because that would be quite useful for us. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on videos that we should know? Yes. <laughs> Anything else on videos that you're going to tell us? <laughs> well, I could do uh, anyway. Um, no, so, it's, hmm? because following up on that um, multilingual videos thing, you've just been talking about giving them a context by embedding them. Could we use embedding the videos in relevant content in different languages to give them a context? Y yes. Um, Does the URL need to be different or something? Does it need to be a different video? So the, the way video indexing and, and uh, works is that you would you would only benefit one page uh, greatly from that, um, and you would leave it to us to decide which page. Um, mean one, pa one page per video embedded? Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, unless you use a RAL canonical, um, but then if you use a RAL canonical, then you pre pretty much give up on internationalization. But supposing we had two copies of the same video, and we gave them a different context, but we, we, so the, the problem they're not is that... They're not duplicate because we've changed the title. But, <laughs> but they're on two different language pages. We do, we do um, hash processing on videos. So we, we would be able to determine that the content of the videos is the same based on hashing. Um, we just wouldn't do language processing on the videos.